In today's video, I'm going to be talking about molting. These are some of the feathers that my birds have molted. Look at them all. There's so many of them. But don't worry, they're not from one bird. <laughs> they're from uh, many birds. I have many birds and I have feathers all over my floor. So generally molting is kind of like uh, shedding in, in dogs and cats or, or you know any mammal. Um, birds molt their feathers so they can grow new ones. And they generally molt uh, once or twice a year for uh, the pet bird. And my birds, they molt, as you can see, in the spring and sometimes in the fall as well. Um, each species of bird is different. I find my Indian ringneck molts in, in the fall. She doesn't really molt in the spring and she molts uh, once a year. But my small birds seem to be molting um, twice a year. Yeah, so they molt their feathers and they grow new feathers. And so when the feathers grow in, you'll see these little pointy things sticking out of their feathers. Like my Linny Pickles here. You can see all those pin feathers um, sticking up out of her head. And here's Dazzle, my lorikeet. He's got some pin feathers on his head as well. They call them pin feathers because they look like pins. And this is my budgie Sterling. He has a lot of uh, pin feathers there. He's uh, going through quite a, quite a bit of a mold. And this is a baby linny. You can see the feathers, how they develop. You can see all they, they look like little straws and then the feathers come out at the end and they all grow in um, even, you know, they grow in, there's never no bald spots. Make sure there's never no bald spots. They'll grow in even on both sides of the bird, on both wings, on the tail, on the head. So the bird should be covered in all feathers all at the same time, has, especially as a baby bird uh, grows. If you notice your bird, uh, has any uh, like bald spots, you want to take your bird to a avian veterinarian to rule out any uh, feather disease or your bird might be plucking or it could be a nutritional problem or some kind of follicle problem if you got fe uh, problems with the flight feathers growing in the follicles uh, could be damaged. So always take your bird to an avian veterinary if the bird does not look normal because in Moulton there should never be bald spots. When your bird is molten, they'll be really itchy, like Willow here. You see Willow, he's, he's really, really itchy. He's sitting on my husband's shoulder and you can see all those, like it looks like dandruff and even a feather will fall out. That's the, the sheaths that, that cover the new feather and that's what the bird's trying to get off. They're trying to get that sheath off so the new feather will come out because the bird is very, very itchy when they molt. So they're going to be itching and biting and rubbing their faces on perches. And you can see my uh, Bork Ruffles here uh, scratching himself or uh, preening himself and, and Benny's uh, scratching. And River, my budgie River here, is, he's really uh, going at himself. Now usually a bird when they're molting they can take care of their body. You know they can reach themselves and they, they preen themselves and take off that, that sheath. It's the head. They can't really get to the head you know unless they, they scratch it themselves. But at that time they, they prefer if they had a birdie friend to help them preen off the sheath. Um, like my two linnies here. Uh, Pickles and Nugget. Pickles is really really preening Nugget here. <laughs> it's so cute. Nugget's um, really enjoying being uh, preened. And then also if you have a bird that's tame, you can help your bird by, you know, uh, massaging the head here, you know, scratching and, and you can take off the sheaths, the sheaths if they're ready. So this is um, Jingles here. He enjoys to be petted and he's got some pin feathers in his, his feathers there in his head and he likes me to pet him and uh, kind of pick up, up the sheets, but some of the sheets, they aren't ready to come off. So I just rub his head and massage him, pet him. He really, really enjoys it. It feels good and it, you know, makes the itching less. Now when birds uh, preen each other, it's called allopreening, meaning they're just preening each other instead of themselves. So I really loved how um, Pickles and Nugget were, were preening. is beautiful to see. And uh, 
Willow and uh, Jingles too. Um, Jingles really loves to be preened and Willow, you know, he Jingles tries to get Willow's attention to get preened, but Willow's busy preening herself. It's kind of cute to see. And when your bird's feathers are growing in, the feathers grow in. There's, there's actually blood in the feathers. The blood uh, is in the shaft of the feather. This one doesn't have blood because it's a, a dead feather, but basically the feather grows because the blood you know helps it grow so there's blood in the feather until the feather fully develops and once the feather is fully developed the blood recedes and that means there's no more blood in it so what you have to watch for is when your bird is growing new feathers especially for the um, the flight feathers or the tail because they're longer and they take a while to grow the feathers um, can break they can break and what would happen is the feather will bleed so if you take one of the feathers that you find in your home that's old, you take scissors and cut the end of it. I don't have my glasses on, but anyways, you can see it's hollow in there. It's like a straw. So just think if a new feather is growing in your bird and your bird's um, tail or, or wing or actually anywhere in its body, um, this feather's hollow and blood is going in. So if the feather breaks, like say here in the middle, right the blood is is growing in there and the blood's going to come out of the broken part it's going to come out and the feather acts like a straw so it's very important that you learn how to pull a blood feather because birds have died from blood loss i'll put the card above of my blood feather video how to pull one out and i'll put the description or the link down below in the description you want to learn how to take a blood feather out because it could be an emergency situation and you won't have time to go to the vet. So everybody should learn how to remove a broken blood feather. Never remove a blood feather that's not broken because it's a growing, it's a live feather. There's no purpose to remove it. Only if it's broken and bleeding. So you know that happens because um, you know a bird might bang into something or you know have night fright like cockatiels have night fright and you know they flap their, their wings they hit the, the, the toys or the side of the cage and the feather will break or if there's a bird fight or any reason sometimes the bird can over pluck especially new feathers because when a new feather grows in remember they're itchy right so your bird might just be plucking or not plucking them um, preening and cleaning itself and they bites one of these and they bleed so it's very 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 important to watch your bird for any blood you'll you'll know you'll see the blood and your bird will probably make noises and scream and I know my cockatiels will screech and my budgies will screech and you'll see them flapping their wings and they'll bleed blood everywhere. So always keep a close eye on them when they are molten and go check out that video so you can learn how to take out a blood feather. And while your bird is molten, you want to help them along. You want to provide them with a lot of bathing opportunities. You can miss them with water if that's what they like. You know, put them in a shower, however they like to bathe and make sure they have the option every day. Now here are some of my birds uh, taking a bath. One of my Borks, Raindrop, is taking a bath. And my lovebird, he, lo he loves baths. He takes baths all the, all the time anyways, so, but that's good. When they're molten, they need more baths. And if they refuse to bath, just mist them with, um, with a spray bottle. You know, just down low and mist them. Don't, don't, don't blast them or anything like that. And you can see my two budgies here, uh, Sky and Jack. They have a great time in the bath. My Indian ringneck, Rio, she loves bathing anywhere in the sink or, or wherever I put water, she will bathe. I give her like extra baths. Like you can bathe them twice a day as much as you want when they're molten just to ease off um, the itch, itching there. And this is my beautiful uh, rosy bork parakeet. His name is Rosie. He's like dipping right in the water. He's, he's so cute. I love watching birds uh, bathe. If you're interested in, in how to bathe your bird, I do have a video on that as well. I'll put the link down below in description or I'll put a card up above here and you can go have a look at that. And also remember, if you do get your bird's uh, flight feathers clipped, and if you're clipping them before the bird molts, just before molt, the flight feathers are going to grow in right away. So really pay attention to your bird's molten pattern because you know if you're going to clip the wings and they're going to molt in a few weeks the flight feathers are going to be out and your bird's going to fly and you, you, you'll say what I just clipped my bird and now it's flying around. 
So that's another thing to take into consideration. And another thing, when they're molten, they can be very, very grumpy. They, they might bite you. They might look a little bit like lethargic. They might uh, puff up. Like my budgie Sterling here, you can see he's he was in a heavy mold and he's, you know, really really puffing up, and uh, they just they just don't feel they don't feel good, and um, you know it's high stress time, so try not to do things that are stressful for them, like you know like clipping their nails or trimming their beaks, whatever they need. Just just leave them alone. Make sure they get extra you know protein, but they should be eating good food every day, anyways. But especially during the molds, you know, offer them a lot of food, a lot of fresh foods, protein, give them some kale to help them along on the molting. So sometimes your bird might look ill when it's molting, but it's perfect, perfectly normal for your bird um, to look like that when it's molting. But if you think your bird is really sick anyways on top of the molten, always bring your bird to an avian a qualified avian veterinarian. If you got any questions, just ask me anything down below and I'll try and answer. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.